despite my ghoulish reputation, I really have the heart of a small boy. I keep it in a jar on my desk. <laughs> I was visiting Tokyo when it happened. I'm not from the big city, I'm from the countryside. Occasionally, work brings me to the city. I caught the bus late at night and I slept the entire journey. I woke up as we arrived at Shinjuku Station. A quick glance at my watch told me that it was approaching 9am. During the bus ride, there were restroom breaks along the way, but I slept through them all, so when I woke up, I was desperate. I literally had about a 30 second window to find a toilet, and a urinal wouldn't do. I tried my best to hold things off as I scoured the station for toilet signs. I don't know if you have ever been to Shinjuku station, but it's massive. It's like a maze. So there I was, following the arrow for the toilet. You know, left, then a right, then a left again. Yeah, if that's not stressful enough when you're busting for the bathroom, imagine trying to weave in and out of the insane amount of commuters. Ah oh man, it was tough. Yeah, I was reaching my breaking point now, anus-wise. I managed to veer off into a quiet little passage. I found it. The holy grail, my friends. One problem though. There was a guy waiting ahead of me for the toilet. I was literally about to shit my pants when the guy ahead of me said the golden words. Do you want to go ahead of me? I was a bit like, what? But my judgment was lapsed. So I went ahead without asking any questions. I thanked him and went in. My ass hit the seat and I was in heaven. I was really proud that I made it in time. Then, it dawned on me. There were two free stalls, so why the hell was he waiting? It must have been the next second or two when I noticed something in the gap in the toilet stall door. It burst through at tremendous speed. It was a long knife. Like the ones they use for sushi, if you have that reference. It slid up and down, scraping the metal as it did. It jabbed in towards me. It was so intimidating and terrifying. As the owner of that knife did this, he also rattled the door to try and get it open. I don't know how else to describe it, but I felt like prey. Like I was a cornered animal and some predator was taunting me. All I could do was hold my knees to my chest and get as far away as possible from the door. I was stuck like that for five minutes, until the knife finally retracted and the rattling ceased. Enough was enough. I booted the door open with all my might in the hope that the outswinging door would injure the attacker at the door. But he was gone. I called the police and tried to give a description of the man who let me go ahead of him in the toilet there, but they didn't sound that interested. Man, Tokyo's creepy. When I was 10 years old, my family and I went on a trip to Disney World. One morning, we woke up very early to eat breakfast at the hotel so we could get to the park before it opened. While they were at the table eating, I had to pee, so I told them I was going to the restroom and would be right back. I walked to the restroom, which was one of those single family restrooms, and was about to open the door when I saw a blonde girl around my age running past me crying. She had her hands on her mouth and stomach as if she was about to throw up. She very frantically stammered, excuse me, before shutting the door in my face. I looked around to see if she was with her family, but I saw no one. I decided she must have had a bad meal, so I waited patiently outside the door, never taking my eyes off it. I don't recall exactly how much time had passed, but it had been a while, maybe 10 minutes. That whole time, I didn't hear any sort of flushing, crying, or throwing up. 
At some point, my mom came up to me, worried, and asked why I was taking so long. I told her about the girl. Then she knocked and asked if everything was okay, to which she had no response. She slowly opened the door, and to my surprise, there was no one there. I tried explaining to her that she was literally just in there, but she brushed it off and told me to hurry up because we were going to be leaving soon. I was young, but I know what I saw. My gaze never drifted from that door. There was no other door in the restroom, and no way she could have possibly exited without me noticing. I've remembered quite a few strange happenings from my childhood, but this by far seems to be one of the most baffling experiences. I've also wondered to myself if this could be something as simple as a ghost, or a bit more complex, such as a glitch. This is off topic, but I feel like as kids, Strange things happen to us because whatever entity or energy causes those things to happen knows we won't remember it as we grow older, or that we will try to chalk it up to childhood imagination. This happened about 12 years ago, but I remember it vividly. I was waiting at the Orlando airport for my mum to fly in for vacation to see me, my daughter and my then fiancé. Her plane had been delayed due to the weather and it was getting later and later. Finally, the airport was almost empty and it was almost midnight. I needed to use the restroom and told my fiancé to hang on to my daughter's stroller as he was falling asleep. I was not tired. I was excited to see my mum and had drank a few coffees. So I went into the women's room and every stall door was open. I chose a random one and used it. All the time, it was completely silent in there. I left the stall and was washing my hands. The bathroom had that mirror that went all the way across the wall and I saw nothing. While washing my hands, I got a really weird feeling. I had been looking down at my hands the whole time and I looked up and there was a scary looking woman standing right behind me, almost touching me, leaning towards me. We made eye contact in the mirror and she said, Jesus loves you. Do you know that? In an extremely freaky way. I was freaked out and just nodded while still staring at her in the mirror. She then walked away, and I couldn't see if she left the bathroom or not, due to the design of the exit. I was shaking over the exchange because the tone she used. It was almost like saying Jesus saved me from her, doing something awful to me. I never heard her come in, and I'm a pretty paranoid person, so I pay attention to listening for people and things. Plus, those bathrooms echo so much. I would have heard footsteps. I also never saw her hands, so I don't know if she had a weapon. I timidly left the bathroom and my fiancé was standing near the bathroom holding my daughter. I asked him if he saw that lady and he had no idea what I was talking about. I looked around the area and it was empty, just us there. Lady with the crazy dark grey hair that was wild around the face, dark eyes and oversized sweater. Your face haunts me. If you were just trying to screw with me, it worked. I am still creeped out today. Jesus loves you. Do you know that? I walked into the bathroom at my community college and there's another guy in there and he's at one of the two urinals. I walk in and step up to the other urinal, and from the moment I walked in to the moment I unzipped my pants, this guy was staring at me. In my head, I thought, maybe this guy is on the spectrum, because our college has a lot of students that are special needs and is a great place for them to get a degree and has really good programs to work with them. So it felt off, but I thought maybe it's nothing. I wish that was where the interaction ended. He finished before me and went over to wash his hands. 
I was just waiting for him to finish up and leave the restroom because it felt really weird. While I'm still at the urinal and this guy is washing his hands, he looks at me and says, you're a complete stranger, so you won't judge me. Is it wrong of me to take out my anger on people I don't know? My first thought was, this guy isn't right, but I should listen. But I answered and I said, no, that's not right. That isn't healthy for you or the other person. He answers, that's the conclusion I've come to as well, thanks. And then he turns and walks out of the bathroom without even drying his hands. I don't know about that guy. I have a bad feeling about him, and I don't know what to do about this situation. So, bathroom guy, I hope you get the help that you need. But let's never meet again. At my school, there's a toilet door that doesn't open. In the boy's toilet on the first floor, the innermost toilet stall, the door is sealed tight. It doesn't budge at all. Some of my classmates say it's just a converted storage room or something. There are plenty of strange rumors about it though. It's eerie. Apparently, if you knock on the door, someone or something knocks back. Even though there should be no one in there, if you ask, is anyone there? Apparently, you'll get a reply. This is just a couple of the creepy rumors. All the kids at school talk about it. One day, my friends and I wanted to see if there was any truth in these rumors. So, as the sun was going down, we decided to head to the toilets on the first floor. There wasn't anything especially different about the toilets on this floor. They were the same layout and design, but there was something about the atmosphere there that was a little different. Perhaps it was our anticipation, but I don't think it was. The innermost toilet door, like the rumors said, wouldn't budge. We tried to heave it open, but it seemed like it was sealed shut. We tried going into the adjoining toilet stall and climbing up to get a peek over the top, but... But that big area above the toilet stall wall had been boarded up. We came to a dead end. Well, someone knock then? One of my friends said. Another of my friends, let's call him A, took on the dare. A approached the toilet stall and knocked. The bathroom fell into an eerie silence. It felt cold in there. For a while we waited for a response, but there wasn't one. We were kind of disappointed. Try asking if someone's there, one of my friends called out to A. Is anyone there? A asked. The only sound we heard was the steady drip of the bathroom tap. Looks like the rumors were fake then, A said while breaking the silence. We all laughed and it eased the tension a little. Let's go then guys, A said. B started whistling some tune or other as we turned to leave. Then, I didn't want to admit to the impossible, but it sounded like the door opened. No one wanted to turn around. I think the door's open, A said. Still, none of us turned around. I was the closest to the toilet. I tried to shake my fear off and began to turn to face it. At that time, my friend began to scream and then ran out of the bathroom. A and I ran after him. We caught up to him and he was sat on the stairs with his head in his hands. What happened? Did you see something? A asked him. There, there was something in the stall, he said. What? I asked. Something like an altar. For worshipping, he said. It was covered in blood. Dry blood. Really? In a toilet stall? It's true. We all headed back to the bathroom. We crept in side by side. I really didn't want to go back, but the other two did. When we got back there, we found the toilet stall was shut again. 
Once more, we tried to heave it open, but it wouldn't budge. We went home very confused. After about a week, my friend, the one who saw the strange altar in the toilet stall, approached me with a problem he had been having. At night, no matter where I am, whenever I go to the toilet someone knocks on the door. I ask my family, but they say they're not pranking me. Every night, I don't want to go to the toilet at night anymore. Something's followed me from that stall. It sounded like whatever was happening to him wasn't about to stop. Anyway, A and I are going to head over tonight and try and see if we can hear the knocking too. I hope he's just hearing things, but who knows. Note. There are no further posts by this author. Hello watchers and listeners. Thank you so much for watching. A huge thank you to Night Terrors for joining me on this one. If you enjoyed their narration, please be sure to go over and check out their channel and maybe even subscribe. The details are in the description below. A huge thank you to all the Reddit users and original authors of the stories used in this video. If you would like to help support this channel, you will find links to both my Patreon and also my Teespring store in the description below. So have a look if you are interested. And as always, the biggest thank you goes to all of you for continuing to support me. I truly do appreciate it. And remember, Papa loves you. <laughs>